Hello everyone and welcome to the IELTS Multi-Step Program. Over the years, one thing that we have noticed about success in the IELTS is the role of practice, which is why we have provided a platform for all our test takers to have a mock feeling of the speaking test. In the videos that you're going to be watching, you're going to have candidates who are preparing to write the IELTS go through the speaking test with a trained IELTS examiner. Please watch these videos and note the mistakes they make, the strategies they've used, and the tips that will be preferred in these videos to help you achieve the maximum success that you desire in the IELTS speaking test. Let's get right into these videos. Today, we're going to be conducting another mock test with test taker dummy. Test taker Dami is uh, a first time test taker who's having his first rodeo with the IELTS test. This is his first time he's taking the IELTS test and even doing anything at all that has to do with the speaking test. So we have to cut him some slack. Test taker Dami uh, ended up with a 7.5 score in the IELTS and we'll walk through why and what pitfalls he made, what mistakes he made and what he did right to achieve that band score. At the end of the test, there will be a review of his performance and please endeavor to watch it to that part. Please, like I always say, you can pause this video at any interval that you want so that you will be able to review a particular tip or a particular uh, strategy that you probably got in that, part of, in that part. Also, the only way that you can fully benefit from these videos is to use the tips and strategies that you get here in your own actual practice. Practice is the only way to success in the IELTS, which is why mock test is something that you should engage in before the day of the test. Let's get into this video. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, please, could you speak up a little bit more? All right, good afternoon. Okay. Um, welcome to the IELTS speaking test. It's a mock test, actually. My name is Lanry, and I'll be your examiner for today. Please introduce yourself. My name is Dami Larry. I'm a German. Okay, so what should I call you? Dami. Dami is better. Good. Do you work or study? I work. Um, tell me something about the people you work with. Um, I work with um, a ed tech company. Um, great youths. As an obvious mistake, an ed tech company instead of a head tech company. And you can also see that uh, Rami, uh, the nerves show here. He's quite uh, he's fidgeting, he's not, he hasn't found his flow yet. And that obviously will affect his performance in the IELTS. Please, as much as possible, I always tell test takers to please find a confidence, that confidence within when you're going for the speaking test in the IELTS. It is not a test of intelligence, it is a test of communication. And what we are assessing is how you express yourself is not what you are saying, not the content, but how you deliver it. And our, um, tries to connect to each other is really nice. Oh, nice. That's a very good, uh, sounds like a very good gig. Um, so, let's begin the test. All right. Can you describe one of the rooms in your house or flat where you stay? Okay, um, I stay, I stay in a, um, um, that's in by testing apartments. Yeah, it's just... This question should not be a question that you should find difficult or strange. Describing a place, describing a person, or describing a concept is something that you should have tried out during your practice or preparation for the IELTS speaking test. There's no way that you're going to escape a description question in the IELTS. And even if you do escape it, it is such a frequent and repetitive question that it is worth your time preparing for it. How do you describe a person? How do you describe a room? How do you describe a concept? This is something that I feel you should pause this video, note, and start to do some research on. Dami obviously does not answer the question because his description is uh, flawed. Describe a room. You know, a favorite room or describe the place where you stay. And then he goes ahead and he gives you the physical dimensions of the place. That could come in later on in the question, but it didn't need to start with that. And like I said before, a first time test taker who hasn't watched any videos, who hasn't done any training, who hasn't undergone any, how do I say, preparation for the IELTS, um, 
It's not just a bad performance, but it could definitely be much better. Okay, so do you prefer living in a big house or a small one and why? I, I kind of prefer living in a big house because yeah, the space gives mm. a lot of things. I see. So what are some of the disadvantages of living in a big house? Um, the disadvantage, I guess, would be um, having to um, align things properly so that you don't have things scattered mm. in um, different places. That's true. So let's talk about entertainment. What is the most popular form of entertainment in your country? Um, I think music. Music. I have a challenge with him starting with um, 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 all the questions. And I also have a very big challenge with the fact that he mumbles and uh, he swallows his words towards the end of his sentences and utterances and then he's not audible enough. All of these are things that would have been fixed or you should fix before the day of your test. It's a speaking test for God's sake. If you're not audible, if you're not trying to communicate in such a way that I can hear you clearly, um, I would have a problem assessing your, evaluating your communicative competence. Please avoid this. It's really the peak of it. People go to concerts more than they go to any other form of um, entertaining uh, music concerts is what I'm talking about now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do people in your country usually prefer to go out or stay at home in the evenings? Um, that depends. That depends on the location. People, people in um, the western um, parts of this country tend to go out more than um, other, other locations. Basically. Okay. Now, why do you think that successful entertainers are often paid so much? Um, well, most, most times, basically, recently or recent, they, they've um, come to a knowledge that they could actually get paid hmm. on um, platforms like YouTube. They monetize their um, performances on YouTube. So I guess that's where most of them are into right now. Okay. Platforms like YouTube that help them to monetize their content. Very good stuff. Relevant vocabulary, industry relevant vocabulary, that is used to describe that concept. Very good points. Okay. okay, so how popular is watching sports in your country as a form of entertainment? It's very popular, very popular. Why do you uh, think that is? A whole lot of viewing centers, um, and then everyone, every youth, yeah, almost as a uh, masculine gender, things like go to viewing centers to watch football. Great. Let's talk about teenagers. Okay. What is life like for a teenager in your country? Well, life life as a teenager is um, kind of like easy, I feel, because you are most dependent on your parents and then they get to like do most of the things for you and then make most of the decisions for you. Hmm. So it's just like you going according to your own view. I see. So um, what are some of the challenges that teenagers face today? I think one of the challenges that I think they face the most is um, decision making. Ah. Because um, they, they've grown up to be dependent on their own parents, and then after the whole process of depending on them, you now have to make decisions your own self. So mm. It's kind of very difficult for them sometimes. Do you think teenagers should be allowed to drive? Yeah, sure. I think they should be. Why is that? Because um, in the Western world, teenagers drive. Hmm. And then driving is like a must know hmm. people. I see. Okay, so um, what are parents' attitudes to boyfriends and girlfriends for teenagers in your country? Well, um, parents in this part in this part of the world, they, they are not really supportive of um, dating hmm. for young people. Or as you grow older, they start to like pray you into stuff like that. Like, why, why don't you have someone with you? <laughs> ah, yeah. Isn't that contradictory? I mean, it's, it's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> really okay, so um, we'll move on to this section two of the test now. 
at this part i will give you a cue card you will have one minute to prepare what you're going to say and after that you'll be required to talk for at least one minute to two minutes to respond to it so i'll give you a pen and i'll give you the question so your question reads i'll we have the question first before i give it to you your question reads thus describe something you bought recently okay you should say what it is where you bought it what it looks like and explain why you needed to buy this thing you have one minute to prepare your response and then you have one minute or two minutes to deliver your response also too all right Um, so your time is almost up now. Are you are you group? Good. So can I have the pen, please? Thank you very much. Yes. So please begin your response now. All right. Um, the coin. Are you asking me first? No, I should just go first. Oh no no! I'll just I'll just read out the question and you begin. Okay. It's to be like a flow, okay. not responding to them one after the other. Describe something you have bought recently. You should say what it is where you bought it, what it looks like, and explain why you needed to buy this thing. Right, um, recently, as of today, um, I just bought the Dodge coin. And then um, it's, been a, it's been something that been, uh, that's been on my mind for a while to get scarce. Um, I feel like cryptocurrency is like the future mm. of currencies. And then I feel like um, if you tap into it at an early stage, you could actually make a real great living out of it. Because I feel make a living. That's good collocation. That's good. That's very good. Um, please endeavor to use a lot of collocations in your speaking test. It will show you off as someone who is competent enough to the level of a native English speaker and will also get you extra scores instead of attempting to use complex vocabulary like big or larger words. Not even that I feel curse. You know, like 10 years back, a decade back. I feel um, Bitcoin was so cheap. Mm. People could get Bitcoin for much less than what it is right now. I mean, right now, 10 years after, it's, it's almost like 50, 50, um, 50, 50 something thousand in mm. dollars. Mm. And then, then it was almost like, say, um, just hundred dollars or hundred dollars. Okay. So if you got it back then, and then you still have it right now. You'd be like 50,000 times richer than you were back then. That's a good deal. Yeah. So um, the cryptocurrency I bought was Dodge. And then I bought it on Beyond's, Beyond's market. And then um, I, I got it because it was dipped. It was, it was dipping. And then I feel like since the pros in this in this field say buy the dip, buying it when it's dipping is the best time to buy it. So I got it and just held it to myself, basically. So I feel like in like 10 years, um, time to well, it grows and then makes more sense than it is right now. It's a digital currency, so I can't I can't really um, describe it. Or it's it's well better described by its logo, hmm. and then that's what you use to differentiate it. Um, I feel like okay, I asked, I asked the question already, the last one, which is um, why do I think it's, it's needed to be, to be gotten? So you could see that he he, he tried to use. The prompts to structure his response. When I say the prompts, uh, what it is, um, what does it look like, why, when you bought it, why you bought it, and explain why you um, why it's important to you, or something like that. Now, I always during this mock test, I always collect the cue card back from the test taker after they finish their one minute of making notes. This is because I've discovered that a lot of people start depending too much on the cue card. They have it in front of them and they use it to structure their talk. So their talk isn't a, a, a continuous flow. 
It's supposed to be like a paragraph, but what they end up having is a list. So they go, and what it is, is it's a crypto, it's a cryptocurrency that I bought. What it looks like is that, it, no, you shouldn't do that. That automatically reduces the quality of your response in the speaking part. So uh, at the beginning of his response, he, he was able to, you know, seamlessly translate from one prompt to the other. But towards the end, they started depending a lot on the prompt and uh, and that that obviously affected the quality of his answer and also reflected in the bank 7.5 score that he got chris i feel i, I, I told you about the fact that it could actually make more sense if you have it right now in 10 years later you can Thank you very much for that very interesting chat. So, um, would you encourage anyone to actually venture into this and buy cryptocurrency? Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. So let's move on to the third part of this test. And um, here I will ask you questions that would require you to give abstract answers. So, what luxury item would you choose if you could have any one thing? Okay, um, what luxury item would I choose hmm. if uh, any one thing? Uh, Right now, I feel I'll just stick to crypto. Ah, I see. <laughs> That's a nice one. Um, do you think luxury possessions bring happiness? Why or why not? Well, luxury possessions actually does bring happiness. Um, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an error there of Concord. That's number. Luxury possessions do bring happiness because that's plural but he said luxury possessions does bring happiness so you can see the reasons why uh apart from the fact that this is the first time he's taking it and he's not so conversant with the structure and the strategies that you should deploy his language also to is quite um, faulty in some places and that's and that's what you can see and that really accounts for the 7.5 score that he's gotten um at the second review of this uh we could probably drop him to as low as a band seven but there were some really high points or bright spots it is uh, performance that uh, ensure that he would definitely be above a band seven but not good enough to enter a band eight uh, range the reason i would say so is because um, seeing luxurious things make people happy normally mm. yeah mm, okay should luxury items be taxed at a higher rate well yeah why because that would differentiate them from non luxury items. Ah, I see. Now, how have the lives of rich people changed over the last 30 years? Over the last 30 years? Yes. Um, I feel like they've, they've um, started to discover, but they've discovered that life is really not about just accumulating funds mm. rather than accumulating funds right now. I see most of those rich people, the likes of Bill Gates, becoming philanthropists and giving back to people yeah very good so now let's talk about the food supply uh, around the world where is your country's food mainly produced um country's food i feel i'm not so sure but i feel like it's produced mainly in the northern parts first mm. that's where they are mainly focused on agriculture i see what are some of the challenges that face food producers today um some of the challenges that fact that there are not so many schooled people doing these things. The, the educated people would rather opt for um, white scholar jobs rather mm. than go into agriculture. Do you believe that the world should use genetically modified food? Well, in my opinion, I feel um, naturally grown stuffs make better sense than genetically produced things. Mm. Well, so there's, there's this repetition of the word stuff, 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 stuff. It's sort of littered throughout the whole test from part one to part two and even the part three. And, and it's, 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 it's definitely not encouraging at all. Please, as much as possible, as much as you want to be relaxed, as much as you want to show off your knowledge of conversational english do not recede into informality it's a test it's a speaking test and you should as much as possible try to give it that level of seriousness that it takes stuffs 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 will not um pass as a um, good vocabulary as good expression be specific about what you want to say stuffs is too general a term to describe anything
for this movie right now. You call up for genetically produced stuff. Hmm. How can we reduce the amount of food wasted today, both domestically and commercially? Well, um, recycling. Yeah, recycling work as well, stuff like that. Hmm. I see. That's a very um, interesting perspective to it. Thank you very much, Mr. Dami, for this very engaging chat. I have actually been able to pick one or two things that I didn't know before, and I think um, that's quite nice. I would definitely take your advice about buying cryptocurrency because uh, I really want to join you also too. So um, let's look at, let's review your performance and just, just have you taken the test before? Test. Have you had this speaking test before? Never. Okay. Have you had classes on the IELTS before? Okay, so that means I'll go easy on you. If it, uh, for someone whose first rodeo this is, you didn't do so bad. Um, my first and general comment would be you need to be a little bit more audible uh, because um, I'm assuming that on the day of the test, you might be wearing a mask, uh, a face mask, so that might actually affect how loud your voice would be, so you need to be a little bit more audible. Overall, there are four criteria for assessing the IELTS speaking test. Fluency, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, that's vocabulary, and then your pronunciation. So I'll start from the bottom. So as I pointed out in previous videos, there was an error with the assessment criteria listed in this video um, from our studios, and that has been fixed. If you check on your screen now, the appropriate or the correct assessment criteria for the read for the speaking test is right on the screen and that would be fluency and coherence grammatical range and accuracy lexical resource and then lastly pronunciation so pronunciation i give you an eight there because i feel that your words were quite audible not like in terms of being loud but i could understand them so all the words that you were using there was none of them that your pronunciation your accent affected my understanding so and i'm assuming that a native english speaker would also be able to understand you clearly so you get eight for that for vocabulary i feel that you could have um, fleshed that out a bit more uh, because i noticed that when you were responding you had uh, quite um, a very solid vocabulary but i i saw that you were trying to be very careful not to explore too much the IELTS is a test of communication it's not a test of intelligence nobody really cares about how much you know it is how much you can communicate or express yourself uh, you would do yourself a world of good if you are more relaxed and then you just go naturally with it you have you have a quite um good knowledge about these things and your vocabulary isn't so bad so please go ahead and use them well i like uh, especially like uh, where you use the word the expression masculine gender and then you also talked about a must know so those are kind of expressions that show that english is quite easy for you to use you can use them naturally like i said there are so many other places where i was expecting you to blow me out of the water but I guess you were not uh, not just in the right frame of mind to do that. Coherence and cohesion. Coherence means does everything you, is everything you're saying is it relevant to the questions you're answering? Yes. Apart from some certain questions where I felt that your answer was not directly related to the question, I think you didn't do so bad there. Cohesion, on the other hand, has to do with how well connected your answers are, your responses are, and that has to do more with part two. In the part two, um, where you were supposed to do the what it is, where you bought it, what it looks like, and explain why you need to buy this thing, your response was more of a singular response to each of the prompts than a connected body of um, talk. Um, so that's something that you need to look out for if you're going to do this next. So we need more connections. So you could have this could have gone like you saying something like, "Oh, I really do not buy a lot of things, but recently I bought something, and it's the Dodge coin. It's a cryptocurrency." see this coin was bought on yeah. just flows instead of you um, separating it one after the other that's for so I got yourself you got a 7.5 there now for fluency now for fluency I, I for fluency it means how you know how does it flow now for fluency there's something that we really look out for and that's hesitation when you hesitate a lot now hesitation can be one of two things it could be either hesitating because of content that is you're thinking of what to say the content you're hesitating because you don't know what to say or you're hesitating because of vocabulary that is you know what to say but you're looking for the words to say it in the aisles hesitating because of vocabulary is actually worse than content we don't expect you to know everything so you can hesitate if you're thinking of what to say but if you're 
thinking of how to say what you know and that's a challenge because it's a test of communication i think more of your hesitation were because of vocabulary rather than because of the ideas so that's where that's where you had a problem with and also you you there, you have a tendency to mumble at the end of the test at the end of your um utterances so you have a sentence that starts with a, a high pitch or like a high volume and then you're going down and just swallows your word that could pose a problem for you in the aisles so um um those are speech fillers and those were just used to so that affected your fluency your fluency could have been way better than it was but, we, but that affected it and then lastly short responses so your short responses there um there were some places where i tried to encourage you and say why why not Ideally, in the IELTS, your responses are not meant to be monosyllabic answers or very short. Try as much as possible to provide robust answers. Give as much detail as you can. Let the examiner be the one to interrupt you or stop you and tell you this is enough for it. It's not a problem. If an examiner stops you, it means I've gotten what I need from that question. So you should not be the one stopping before the examiner. It's, it doesn't give a good vibe. So overall, this was a quite um, good performance of course there's room for it being better i'll give you a 7.5 as this i feel that um there's a lot of room for improvement there um informality informality in the part three informality means there was this tendency for you to sink back to the or to revert back to like the informal expressions things like yeah things like stuffs aha uh -huh, exactly stuffs so and um, that's that's a challenging area that you would not want to uh, fall into um i also like the way you responded to the question uh, i'm coming there was a question here about where is your country's food mainly produced you talked about i'm not so sure that's a very good one a lot of people assume that the ielts means you must know everything no if i'm ignorant about something how do i convey my ignorance how do i let you know that I'm unsure of my answer. And that was quite good. So you telling me that you're not so sure there means that whatever you're going to say after should not be held to such a rigid standard. That's a very good strategy to use. Of course, you don't want to do that for all the questions, but if you, if you get a question and you practically do not have anything to say, or you don't have a lot to say, let the examiner know that this is coming from a weak point for you. It's a test of communication, anything goes um i like the recycling part it was actually a good idea and i think like i said i learned a couple of things from this test uh i look forward to doing this again with you hopefully you'll honor us when you when we call you again after you've gotten some brushing up or some lessons on the ielts thank you so so much for this conversation and i think we've come to the end of this test now thank you so so much for your time and the best of luck in your future endeavors thank you very much. you're welcome Overall, Dami didn't do so bad, but there's a lot of room for improvement and uh, we look forward to welcoming him again to our studios to do another mock test and there we'll be able to see if he has improved or if he's still in the same level or if he has reduced in his communicative competence. Please, as, as I always say in all these videos, watch these videos not just for the sake of watching them to enjoy them. Please extract tips and strategies that you can use in the IELTS and before you get into the test, apply them in a mock test or with regular practice with someone who can serve as an accountability partner for you. Or just reach out to us at our studios here and we can conduct the mock test for you. So I come your way again. I wish you maximum success and the best of times in preparing for the IELTS.